so welcome back to the channel um, today I am driving back from Columbus Ohio and I forgot my camera mount because I actually wasn't planning on doing a video today so I thought that I would do a video talking about what the heck do I do for a living that's been a hot topic on YouTube not just me but lots of people especially in the car world they'll do these videos on what do I do for a living because I always like to know when I watch these videos of people with Hellcats I'm like man I want a Hellcat so bad I wonder what that person does for a living so that is what the topic of this video is gonna be and I know a lot of you have asked me like what do you do for a living or man I wish I could build a Knight Rider car but I'm not rich so there's no way I can do that this guy must be rich or whatever that's not the case whatsoever trust me um, but yeah, I'm just going to touch the subject of what the heck I do for a living and give some advice that people's told me on how to build a car collection and create revenue and income from stuff. So yeah, that's what today is. So hopefully you guys enjoy it. Please subscribe. Like I said, that helps me. I'm back to making videos. So there's going to be a lot of these things coming up, especially stuff with Kit my WS6, hopefully my Hellcat, my future Hellcat, um, my wife's car, she's got a low mile 82 Trans Am, and I think that touches everything, and then I have a Ram truck, that's what I'm in right now, that I'm always continuing doing stuff to, so if you're a car nut, if you like Knight Rider, if you like Trans Ams, muscle cars, this is the channel for you, so hit that like and subscribe. So, um, what do I do for a living? Well, that's a tricky question because it's actually a lot of different things. So one of the best words of advice that I've ever heard from somebody was, if you want to be successful in life, you want to be able to create different incomes from different income sources. So if something happens to one of those income sources, you can adjust and you don't go into panic mode. So, after I heard that advice, I'm like, you know what, that's great. I want to be able to do the same thing. So actually, I have a bunch of different income sources, and I'll tell you guys a little bit about that, which is, gl I'm glad that I do have a couple of different income sources, because if I didn't, I just got laid off from one of my jobs this past week. I'd be in panic mode right now. So um, I'm not in panic mode because I have four other income sources, and they're all legal, by the way. If you think that I'm... Yeah, everything that I do is legal, so you don't have to worry about that. Which, <laughs> on a side note, there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of people like with these Ferraris and Hellcats. Like, yeah, I'm 17. Here's my Ferrari. Blah blah blah. I don't work. It's just like, okay, you're getting income from another source that you can't really say on YouTube. But all my sources are legal. So. Starting with one of them is what you're watching right now. YouTube is a source of income for me. Now, it's not the greatest source of income for me, but I do make something every month from YouTube. And as the subscribers grow, that's why I try to get these subscribers and create content that you guys would watch and enjoy. Um, yeah, that's an income source. It's has been as high as $400 in a month from YouTube, which is awesome. If I could keep $400 a month coming from YouTube, that would be absolutely incredible. That would almost justify a car payment, <clears throat> which is a lot of how these guys are affording these cars. I mean, a lot of these 17-year-old kids that's got a million subscribers, they're probably racking in twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 a month just from YouTube. So I make, I mean, probably average $200 a month on YouTube. It's been as high as 400, it's been as low as about 100. Um, even when I wasn't creating content for two months, I got a check for, I think, like 80 bucks in one month and like 75 on another month. So it's something that just keeps on giving if you put the time into it. And I enjoy making these videos. So that is one source of income that I have, which I continue to grow. So like and subscribe. So another source of income that I have is I work for a company, and this is my main source of income. I work for a company called Soundcom. So we're basically a technology integrator. We have eight offices. I work at the headquarters in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, so basically what a technology integrator is, is sort of what it sounds like. Anything that has to do with technology, we install and we 
train. So I'm actually the trainer for SoundCom. So all of our technicians, they install stuff from touch panels at hospitals to scoreboards and stadiums to video conferencing systems in um, office buildings. So I go in and train end users on how to use the stuff that we installed, which is what I was doing today. I had to drive two hours to do a training, and now I'm driving two hours back. That's why I dress the way that I'm dressed right now. And then I'm also a house of worship uh, advisor, salesperson for the company. So it's actually a great, a great thing because I get my base income, which I'm completely satisfied. Which is just, I mean, it's nothing like crazy, crazy, but it's not low either. It's just a medium. I would think it's just an average income that an American would make. So I make that, and then anytime I sell a church sound system, which has been a decent amount lately, I get a commission. So I'm not reliant on commission. If I don't sell anything, I get my base income that I'm happy with. If I do sell something, it's a bonus for me, which is a great added bonus. Which leads me into the third one, which I just recently lost this job. For the last four years, I ran sound for a church. So that's sort of my background. I'm a musician and I'm, I'm a pretty good sound guy. I mean, not, not trying to sound cocky, but I, I do know how to run sound and I, I do it well, which was justified on how I got paid to run sound for a church here in Cleveland, Ohio. Did that for the last four years and just recently got let go. Nothing that I did, but they're cutting corners and the best way to cut corners is fire the sound guy. So that's what they did to me, which sucks and is a blessing at the same time. It sucks because it was a good salary for the position and it gave me a lot of extra money for car parts and stuff that I, I didn't even think twice about that money. I just spent it on car parts and because it's so far removed from my salary that, oh sweet, whatever the salary or the, whatever this money amount per month was, I'm going to spend it on car parts and wheels or tires or whatever. So that sucks that I'm not going to have that. But what's awesome is this will be the first time in my life I've ever had a Sunday off. My day job is a great 8 to 5. When 5 o'clock hits, I'm done with work. I don't have to think about it. Um, but this church job, it was basically like 7.30 to 1.30 on a Sunday. And by the time I got home, like 2 o'clock. And by the time you eat, it's getting like 3 o'clock. So your whole Sunday's wasted. And... People in the car world knows that the fun car shows happen on Sunday, so I've never been able to go to any of these car shows, which I'm sort of excited that I can go to car shows now. So that's one source of income that's no longer around that I had a week ago that's not here. I'll probably fill it up with something. That's just who I am. Um, but yeah, that's what I did. So those were three sources of income. I have a fourth source of income which I own a detailing business. It started out with something that I owned a black truck, which I'm driving right now, and I'm super OCD, so the second I would get a swirl on it, it would make me go crazy, and I would either trade a vehicle, or if I got a scratch on it, I couldn't live with it, so I'd trade the vehicle in, or pay somebody a lot of money to fix it for me, for it to just happen again, and I'm like, you know what, I need to learn how to do this myself. So I went to some training courses, learned how to detail, which is not just really detail, it's called paint correction, which is basically removing layers of clear coat at a time to remove scratches and swirls. When you see these show cars and the paint looks amazing, they've had their paint corrected. So you're buffing it out. Um, so it started with just me doing my own cars. I would go to a car show and somebody's like, oh my goodness, your car looks amazing. Um, who had it done, or where'd you have it done? I told All right, so I got cut short because I talked too much and I filled up my SD card, so sorry about that. But we were talking about our, my detailing business. So my detailing business, it started at $250 a detail because I just thought it'd be cool extra money that I could go ahead and detail some cars, make 250 bucks, it'd be awesome, spend an evening to do it. And I got booked up solid by doing that. So then I'm like, you know what? I'm either gonna be killing myself trying to get this wait list off or 
I gotta raise my prices. So then the next summer I went up to $400, which was quite a big jump, and it was still just as busy, actually more busier than the first summer, and I'm like, you know what, I need to either hire people or raise my prices again. So talking to a lot of people in the detail industry, if you're really good, which I'm not good at all, I mean, I'm good at some stuff, but I excel at detailing, and that's not me being prideful or anything. That I can honestly say I'm probably in the top 5% when it comes to being able to do uh, paint correction. And a lot of that has to do with me being as OCD as I am. I will not go from a panel to another panel until that panel is beyond perfect and looks better than what it looked like new. So talking to other people that's like-minded like me, it seems like they're starting their prices at 500 and I'm like, oh my goodness, are you kidding me? Like $500? I don't know. So I went out on a limb because it was my fourth removed uh, income coming in, and if I did lose it, it's not the worst of the worst because I still have my regular income. I raised my prices to 500, and people are still getting their cars detailed at 500 dollars a piece, which has been great because I get to work on better cars than like a Cavalier or whatever. I'm doing like Porsches and Mercedes and Ferraris and all the high-end stuff and stuff that an auto detailer would want to detail. So my clientele's changed, and it's changed for the better. It's changed for people that can afford to get their cars detailed. So as you can see, that could be super profitable, and it is my fourth income. So if I do four cars a month, that's at least $2,000. And if it's a truck, which I've done a couple of trucks, I mean, sometimes I charge seven to $800 to do a truck. Um, so at least two thousand dollars a month it can be somewhere between three thousand thirty five hundred dollars a month on my fourth removed income coming in and that's not me trying to brag or anything that's just staying the facts that's just what what it is i mean you guys ask so <laughs> um but that's something that's good to have as a, a fallback it it does take a lot of training to get good at it and there is an expense in the quality, which my camera bag is making a noise, sorry about that. Um, there is an expense in the quality or in the stuff it takes to detail, your buffers. So everything's redundant, so I'm not gonna go buy a Home Depot buffer to detail these Ferraris with. Of course, I have to have the best of the best buffer to be able to do stuff like that. And then you have to have redundant stuff. So if that buffer breaks in the middle of doing a detail, you have to have a backup. So I pretty much have two of everything when it comes to detailing stuff. So the startup, I probably was in $5,000 startup to start that business. But as you can see, you can make your money back in about a month if you work hard. Um, yeah, so I do that. And the cool thing about all of these different sources of income which I sort of talked about before with losing the church job. I really didn't feel the pain of it because I had other things to um, fall back on. And the cool thing about this is I hopefully I never lose my day job. I plan on being at my day, day job for the rest of my life if they allow me to because that's what pays the bills, that's what pays the house payment and all this other stuff. But if something did happen to that day job, I could probably go into doing auto detailing full time and make way more money at that than probably all these incomes together, but I don't want to be doing auto detailing when I'm 60 years old. I like my office job. So worst comes to worst, I have a backup of a backup of a backup plan, and I think that's just being wise to have different things, which I never had before. So all this, all this new way of thinking something that's happened in the last four years 12 years previous to that I worked at an organization which I'm not going to tell because they're probably going to be watching this or people knows where I work so I'm not going to say names but I worked a dead-end job I mean I was working 70 hours a week at, especially at the last location that I or organization that I worked at um, making like $42,000 a year working 70 something hours a week which was ridiculous terrible money, terrible hours, never got a break, didn't have any free time, definitely didn't have any cars making that little. And it was a type of job that 
I went in for a raise. I'm like, hey, I need to at least be making 50 if I'm going to stay here. And, well, to go back in time, I don't have a college degree. I went to college for music, which I'm glad I didn't finish because that would have got me nowhere. But um, that job just kept on hanging that education over my head. It was so annoying. Um, like, yeah, we'll give you a raise. Yeah, we'll give you $55,000 a year if you go back and get a college degree. And I'm like, there's, I'm not going to go spend $120,000 just so you can give me a $12,000 a year raise increase. That makes no sense. And they're like, well, that's the only way that you're ever going to raise in our organization, blah, 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 blah. Anyways, they said I wasn't worth it. So then I went out and took a leap of faith, went into a completely different career field of what I have uh, ever had in the past because this organization, I worked at four other organizations, but it's the same type of organization. It would make more sense if I could tell you what the organization is. But I'm not going to tell you that because it's dishonoring to those people. But um, they said I wasn't worth the 50000 so I changed jobs and was able to find a job that paid me that. So, or more, or whatever. I'm not going to tell you what I made. But, like I said, it's a median salary. So... If you're stuck in a dead-end job, you're trying to get raises, and they don't see the benefit in you, I'm telling you right now, look somewhere else, because I wish I would have made the career change 10 years ago. I stayed in that career for 12 years and wasted 12 years of my life um, when I could have made the career change 10 years ago and been way farther, farther along than I am right now. So if you're thinking about making the jump, make the jump. Um, that's all I have to say about that. So in a college education too, I mean, college is for some people, it's not for others. I think, I don't know, I might offend a lot of people. I think college is for people that might not be a go-getter as much as somebody that didn't go to college. I mean, I think in the end, if you're smart and if you have different training and different things and you didn't go to college, you could be just as successful as somebody that went to college and you don't have any of the debt. I'm happy to say that I have no debt in my life. I'm able to pay off all my cars, so all of, everything that I'm able to do is debt free. Um, which even that, I mean, if you're disciplined, you can make money by spending money. So. I have a rewards credit card that I get about $1,000 back a year just because I spend money on it. So if you're diligent enough to actually pay off your credit card every month, they give you money back. Um, so why not? That's a free thousand dollars a month. Three thousand just by doing that. So just by spending money and YouTube, I could be making six grand a year just by that. Just free little things. Just you spend the time. I'm, talking to you guys so the money's out there go grab it it's definitely it's yeah so um how i feel about debt and stuff like i said i don't have debt in my life but i will be going in debt for sure for a hellcat i mean the hellcat that i have specked out is around eighty thousand dollars is it worth eighty thousand dollars to me it's worth eighty thousand dollars um but it is a $30,000 car with a huge motor on it. So you can look at it that way. Are you getting more quality with like a BMW, which I could go out and buy a BMW if I want. I was looking at M3s and M4s, but there's just something about the Hellcat that, I don't know, it's just, you're getting, where else can you get now 800 horsepower for $80,000? You're not doing that until you get into supercars. With supercars, I mean, you're going to start at like $150,000 to get into a supercar. And they're still not as fast as a Hellcat. So if you're after speed, that's the way to go. So that's what I want to do. But the way I think about um, debt, and I heard a YouTuber, he was talking about his Hellcat. And he actually spent a lot of money. He didn't even do down payment on his Hellcat or not. And his payment's like $1,200 a month, which is crazy. But that's what it is for a $80,000 car or $1,400 for an $80,000 car. How I think of that is if that gets you out of bed and gets you motivated to try to increase your overall salary and have different income avenues coming at you, if that's a motivator to get you to do that, I think 
buying a car like that is awesome. So if you have no debt in your life, it's super easy to be like, yeah, you know what? I'm super comfortable with my job. I don't have any debt, so I don't have to really work, and I'm gonna come home and I'll watch TV and do whatever, and life will be good. But if you want nice things, you're gonna have to work for it. Most people's not gonna be able, probably, to have even the car collection that I have on a base salary. If I just judged it on a base salary from my employer, I'd be able to pay the house payment, pay the bills, and maybe enough for like a $200 a month car payment. But I'm driving a new Ram truck, I got the Trans Ams, I own kit from Knight Rider, which most people's not able to have that. But that all came from outside income. So when people's like, oh yeah, he's rich, it'd be nice to have an awesome paying job like that. I am not rich by any means, but I work my butt off and I have four other jobs besides my salary and I still get to enjoy the weekends. So usually on my, usually I do detailings Friday night, which will take me till about two in the morning to finish. I have all day Saturday and half of a Sunday. Now I have all day Sunday, so I work super hard throughout the week, but I get to enjoy the weekends, and that's when I get to enjoy all the stuff that I was able to buy with all the jobs that I did throughout the week. So you can look at that as, I don't know, I don't know how you go with that. So if you don't want nice things, stay with your normal job. If you want a lot of nice things in life, you're gonna have to work for it, unless you're a doctor. And when you're a doctor, you're working a lot too. It's not just a 40 hour do or 40 hour a week job. So to have the nice things in life, unless you're like a trust fund baby or an oil baby or have rich parents, which I had none of that, you have to work your butt off for it. So if you want a night rider car, you can absolutely do that. But like I said, I, I, I worked day and night to pay for that thing. So I was able to pay for it before I even built it. So I wasn't able, I didn't have to go in debt for that, which is huge. And then I bartered a lot to get like paint and all that other stuff that, yeah. So that's where I came from. Um, and yeah, so I have a dream garage. I'm halfway there right now. So I've never said what my dream garage is. So my dream garage would be a sick 4x4 truck, which I feel like I have right now. I have a Ram Sport with the Hemi in it, leather interior, heated, cooled seats. I mean, it's it's as maxed out as maxed out can be. This is my daily driver. So I got that. My other dream car out of the five is the Knight Rider car, which I was able to complete that about two years ago. So that's a check mark off the list. My third car in the dream garage would be a 2002 WS6 that's all built up. As you can see, I have that. That's just my pretty much my dream car, period, because that was just the car that I thought that was badass growing up, and I always wanted it, and I have it now, and it's built, and it's mint, and it's just it's a really cool car. So I have that. So I'm, I'm three out of the five in my dream garage. So my fourth one, hopefully I'll be adding very, very soon if I can find the right deal on it, is a wide body black Hellcat. I just think those are badass as well. Um, you get a fast car for a halfway decent amount of money. And then my fifth car in the dream car garage, and then I'll be complete and I won't need anything else, would be some sort of exotic car, be it a Ferrari or a Lamborghini or yeah, probably stick to those two. Some sort of exotic like head turner, like wow, what the heck is that? So yeah, that's that's my dream car garage and hopefully I'll be able to have all those dream cars within the next 10 years. That's the goal in life. Um, probably won't be able to afford a brand new Ferrari, but maybe a two year old Ferrari, hopefully one day if I work hard enough and get it. And then I can build a pole barn and have all of them laid out all black, all mint condition. Oh, that would be great. Pull into the garage and be like, which car do I want? Do I want the Ferrari or do I want to take Kit out for a spin? You know what? Maybe I'll just take the wife's 82 train. I don't know. So just they got to all be black and they all got to be awesome. And then I want to get the wife a Grand Cherokee SRT when her lease is up. So that's it. Um, probably not the wisest idea, but if if that motivates you, I think it's okay to get a little debt. Now, if you don't have any other debt, I think it's totally cool to take on a ridiculous amount of debt for a car. 
Now Dave Ramsey would tell you completely opposite. Dave Ramsey's sort of the extremist. I think he's designed for people that don't know how to manage money, that has a spending. They, they just like to spend way too much. Um, he's helped a lot of people out of debt, but if you're cool with what you spend and if you save up and do good down payments on things, I think it's totally cool to have a little debt in a car if cars are your hobby. I mean, some people like to drink, some people go to the club, some people spend more money on baseball games than what my car costs. So it's just whatever you are. I mean, Dave Ramsey tells you to freeze your credit cards so that you have to unthaw them to use them. Now, like I said, I'm able to pay my credit card off every month, so I don't think that would apply to me. But he, tell, he tells people, like, don't spend, like, don't spend anything on a car. And if you have to, it should only be 5% of your income. I mean, if you're making 60 grand a year, that's $3,000. You could, and well, he's not even telling you to take the lease. He tells you to buy a car for 5% of your income. So that would be $3,000 on a car. I mean, that's just not going to happen with me. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, so that's Dave Ramsey. I mean, yeah, I have nothing else to say about that. But, all right, guys, so that that clues you into what I do for a living. I think I gave you all my income avenues. I like to flip things, too. I mean, if there's a, any, anything I can make. Oh, I mow grass, too. I forgot about that. So I mow people's grass. I am not embarrassed enough to say that I mow a couple people's grass for $30 a pop. You know what? $30 a pop times three lawns, that's 90 bucks a week. And you times that, that's like $400 a month. That's a car payment. That's half of a Hellcat payment. So, like I said, it's I'm not rich by any means. I just work a lot. But I'm still able to enjoy my life. And my wife. My wife is, she owns her own business. She's very successful in what she does. She's a hairdresser, so she has her own salon. Um, and she's just not doing like little things. I mean, she gets to do like runway hair. Like she's, I would put her in the top 2% of hairdressers in America for sure. And she's even gonna start her own YouTube in a little bit showing, doing video tutorials. I mean, she's won so many competitions, like national competitions on hair. I mean, so that's a whole nother thing. I mean, my wife does well for herself, but she works her butt off. We don't sit around and watch TV at night. If anything, I'm doing things with the car and she's doing stuff to get more clients so we're not we don't we don't really relax and when we do relax for some reason we get sick so our bodies like to go 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 so hopefully that helps you hopefully that motivates you what it comes down to is if I own if I own a night Rider car and I own the cars that I have and I plan on buying a Hellcat that should give everybody hope that you could do the exact same thing because yeah I didn't go to college but hard work but it does pay for itself so don't hear this as being prideful here hopefully you hear this as a motivator on if literally I can do it anybody in the world could do the exact same thing and be able to have the car collection that they want or that any of the other collections um but it's, you, you gotta be thinking. You just gotta be thinking. I know this video is way too long, but you just gotta be thinking on how you wanna get that money. And it's there, it's there for the grabbing. All right guys, stay tuned to the next video. I think the next video I'm gonna do five things I hate about my Knight Rider car, because there are things I hate about it. So thanks a lot for tuning in, everyone. Later.